All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. We got the Memorial Tournament for the Memorial Weekend. That just happened. Um, already looking at this one, I do like this one a lot more than last week. And just going over the video for this week, we're going to do the week or the last week recap as always. And then we're going to do the player pool breakdown. And then we're going to do the core four section. So let's get into that recap of last week. All right, so starting off last week, as you guys know, Jason Kolkrak actually ended up withdrawing who was one of our favorite plays last week. He was in our cash lineup, which was very unfortunate. Another guy that we are kind of teetering on was Joel Dahman. Joel Dahman missed the cut, barely. He was T-74, along with who he had, ended up having to go with instead of Jason Kokrak, who was uh, Ricky. We kind of changed our cash build around because that withdrawal of Jason Kokrak. Um, so we didn't cash last week, but that was, you know, it was all right. We The three people that I didn't... Um, make the cut in our cash build were Matt Jones, Joel Diamond, and Ricky Fowler. Between the three of them, they had about like 39 made cuts in a row. So sometimes that's just going to happen. And that was kind of why last week was just a week that I didn't like too much. As you guys know, last week there's a ton of good players that didn't do well. Justin Rose, Ricky obviously, Paul Casey didn't do well, Kevin Kisner didn't do well, Louis Oosthuizen withdrew. I mean, there's just a ton, a ton of players that didn't do well that should have. Bryson's another one that pops up. So it was just one of those weeks where sometimes the best weeks are the ones that you can predict are not going to be good weeks. And that's kind of how last week went with us. So it was pretty nice that on a bad week, we knew it was going to be a bad week. And even still, it would have been a decent week if Jason Kokrak had him withdrawn, then we would have had a good cash line. If that cash line um, indeed would have cashed, um, I ended up switching Ian Poulter into that build and just ended up having it be a GPP build. That one ended up cashing and only had one person missing the cut, who was down, and the rest were like Graham McDowell and then the rest of the core from last week. So overall, last week, it was you know not a profitable week, but last week we knew it was not going to be a good week, so we didn't play that much which is kind of why I'm going to start doing the total on this side and then the weekly cash rate because, you know, I want to be truthful to both items. So because I know some people are just going to enter that one cash lineup in per week. We'll give that to you guys, 75% win rate. But also some weeks where last week we only entered the cash lineup into one cash contest, whereas two weeks ago at the, um, the PGA Championship, we entered that in as many as we could. So it's going to be different for you know whoever does that. So some people I know, they only do one cash lineup a week, and that's fair. But for some people, each week's different. And each week, we have a different confidence level in our cash lineup. Last week, we didn't really have that, so we only did in one. Two weeks ago, we really loved our cash lineup, so we entered in a bunch of contests. And for the Patreon subscribers that are out there, I think going forward, I'm going to have a little system for you. Green's going to be... Um, they're going to be color coded. So green is going to be the ones that I really like the most. So I'm going to have yellow for you know a decent amount, and then red is just pretty much going to mean you know one or two cash contests, not too much. And obviously, I'll explain that in the comment section like I typically do. But let's get into this week. It should be a pretty good week. Like I said, I already like this tournament a lot more than last week's tournament. Just looking at the price, and it seems a lot easier. We got some course horses here. Tony Finau, Matt Kuchar, Gary Woodland, Phil Mickelson, Mark Leishman, Emiliano Grillo, and Kevin Streelman are all guys that have some good course history. And then there are also going to be some players here that overlap with good current form. Now Rory, he also does have good course history, but Emiliano Grillo, he has some good course history as well. Um, or good current form as well. So key stats are going to be strokes gain, T2 green, green some regulation, ball striking, and total driving. Now if you want to change those a little bit, you could do driving distance and proximity instead of strokes gain, T2 green, and um, greens and regulation. But those are going to be the key stats that we're going to be targeting. Um, and also we're going to be looking at total putting as always. <clears throat> All right, so starting the build out here think if you can pay up for Rory, you definitely should. Rory's course history is uh, in 2017, he had a T8. And then in 2015, he had a T4. You know, Rory, he is first in straight skin, T to green. He is 73rd in greens regulation, 64th in total putting, uh, T18 in ball striking, and top 40 in total driving. He's made 18 straight cuts in a row. The thing about Rory, he's just been a great player this whole year. Eight of his 10 starts have been top 10 finishes. Now, Tony Finau, maybe this is a little bit of carryover from last week of him doing well, but Tony Finau's been pretty much a cut maker this whole year, only missing one cut. 
He has three top 15 finishes here in the last four years and hasn't missed the cut here. So that's obviously something that we really do like out of Tony Finau. Now, Matt Kuchar, I already mentioned, he has good course history in good current form. He has four straight top 25 finishes or better, um, including three straight top 15 or better. So we do really like him. Obviously, he's a great stat fit. He's one of the best stat fits in the field as well, top five this week. So I do like him. Uh, Jason Day. He's made the cut the last three years at this course. 2014 or 15, he did miss the cut, but oh well. Um, he is a really good stat fit as well. He also ranks top five um, according to my model. Now, we do wish he had a little bit better corn form, but we know Jason Day, when he's playing and when he's making the cut, it's pretty much a guarantee of a top 25. So we do like Jason Day as an option this uh, week. The last one's going to be Gary Woodland. He seems like more of a GPP option just because he has only made two out of his last four cuts um but at this course he actually has a t23 t49 t4 and then a missed cut uh, so obviously he does have good course history here he is one of the better stat fits as well he is first in ball striking third in total driving seventh in stroke skiing t degree and he's also top 40 in that greens and regulation so he's a good staff fit and he does have that good course history now hendrick stenson might be more of a sneaky option he's been playing really well making five of uh his making five cuts in, in his last five starts Sorry. And he's a pretty decent staff fit, so I do like Henrik Stenson as an option this week. I think people are going to be kind of sleeping on him as an option this week, so I do think we can kind of use him as a GPP option if we want to. Roy Sabatini, now he's just been a cut maker this whole year, uh, making 10 straight cuts, but it's what he's done recently that's really impressive. All those top 10s there, top 20s, I do like that, but he might be a little bit overpopular of an option. Now, he is going to be a decent, you know, 20% GPP option, maybe. Jason Kolkrak, we kind of got to see why he withdrew. I think it was just the Stanima thing. He wanted to play in this tournament instead of that previous one, especially with the windy conditions last week. Make it easier on yourself instead of harder. I think that's kind of what he decided to do. He has missed three out of the last four cuts here, but as we know with Kolkrak, he is one of the better stat fits in the field as well. He is also top 15, according to my model. Emiliano Grillo is an option I'll touch on later on in this video, but I do really like him with only one missed cut on the year and zero missed cuts here in the last four years. He's a great option. I'll kind of break that down a little bit more um, in the core four section for you uh, later on in this video. Next one, Lucas Glover. So I do want to touch on him a little bit. Now with Lucas Glover, when he makes the cut, it's pretty much a T20 or better finish for him this whole year. All but one of his made cuts have been outside of uh, T20 or better. So we do like that about Lucas Glover. He does have good course history. He's made the cut um, each of the last four years here. Now, none of them were great finishes, but obviously Glover is playing some of the best golf of his career this year. So I think that's something we can roll with. Now, Kevin Stroman, he's more of a Texas player. So it wasn't really surprising that he played well down that stretch in Texas, but he has great course history here. T44, T13, T8, and T18. He's also top 30 in total driving and ball striking. He's also top 40 um, in... Uh, strokes gain tee to green and top 50 in greens and regulation so we do like kevin stroman as a great value option him and keegan bradley are pretty much the exact same plays as well so kevin stroman and keegan bradley go hand in hand but so does russell knox i mean those three options are pretty much the same play to me knox hasn't missed a cut here in the last four years he's not as good of a ball striker or um, total driver as the other two but we know with russell knox he's just been playing really well this year so i do like him as an option as well uh, uh, Keith Mitchell here, he's not the best option. He's more of a GPP option. He does have a missed cut here last year, but we know Keith Mitchell has been playing some of the best golf of his career as well, so we can roll with him if we want to. A little bit of a safer option is going to be Adam Hadwin for you, who's made three of the last four cuts at this course. Um, he's a decent staff fit as well. You know, top 50 in total driving and ball striking. He's made his last four cuts as well. So Adam Hadwin, more of a safer option than Keith Mitchell, but I think I'd rather go with Knox as well. You know, I think... Keegan Bradley and Kevin Stroman, one of those two, or maybe both will be in my cash build. And then maybe Russell Knox as well. I'm kind of flirting around with all three of those. I do like them as an option. Now for the value side of it, there's not that many great options. I could see Troy Merritt. He's a good staff fit, but, you know, he doesn't have the best current form. Adam Long's an option we can go with as well. But Adam Long, he's played well recently. But I just, you know, he's not the best stat fit, so I don't really want to roll with that either. This week, there's just not that many good um, value options. Now, maybe Max Homa is someone you can go with. He does have course experience here, but he did miss the cut. He's made three straight cuts, and, you know, Max Homa's actually just been rolling this year. Um, the one saving grace he has stat-wise is he's, you know, a really good putter, top 35 in that. So it's kind of just 
I don't know. I just don't really like the value options this week, so I don't think I'm going to be dipping below 7K unless I absolutely have to. Maybe in some of the Rory builds that I make, I'll have to do that. But other than that, I'm going to do a fair and balanced lineup. And this is actually a lineup that I pretty much do like. So that's going to be a great GPP lineup for us this week. Now, let's get into the core four. All right, so starting off here with Rory McIlroy, I already touched on it. I feel like if you can fit him into your builds, you definitely should. In his two starts here in the last four years, both top 10 finishes. And he's just been a beast this year. Eight of his last 10, or eight out of his 10 starts have been top 10 finishes. So obviously, Rory, even last week, he struggled in his last tournament at the PGA Championship. He struggled, and he was still able to make the cut. So I do like that. The only problem with Rory, it's kind of hard to fit him into the build. So like I said last week, I was going to give you guys more pivot plays from the core in case you know someone withdraws or in case you're just not feeling it or in case weather pops up where they're not as good of an option. Just kind of give you guys that feel. I think if I were to go down from Rory, <clears throat> it would actually be to my next favorite um, core four option. That's actually going to be Matt Kuchar. So I'll give you another pivot from Matt Kuchar after this. But let's touch on Matt Kuchar now. So Matt Kuchar just been rolling. T13 finish here in 2018. T4, T4 the last two years after that. And then a T26 finish here in 2015 as well. So we do really like that. The thing about Kuchar, 12th in strokes gained T to green. Top 15 greens in regulation. He's third in ball striking and 16th in total driving. Now his putter has been slacking, so we do worry about that, but made 16 straight cuts. So obviously Matt Kuchar's just been rolling this year. So we do like Matt Kuchar. He seems like a safe, easy option. So we do like that. But I think if we needed to pivot off of Kuchar, you could easily just go down to someone like Jason Day or Hideki Matsuyama. Hideki, we know, he's just been a cut-making machine. Hideki's top, well, both Jason Day and Hideki are top 25 in ball striking and total driving, so we do like that. Um, Hideki's made 21 straight cuts. Hideki is fourth in strokes skin, T to green, and Jason Day is um, top 30. So we do like both those options, both not horrible pivot options for you if we need to go that route. All right, so Emiliano Grill, I, I said I would touch on him a little bit more. Great course history, great recent form. We do like that. The stat side of it, though, tells us the same story. You know, he's top 10 in both ball striking and total driving. He is 20th in strokes gained to the green. Now, he doesn't have the best greens in regulation, only 95th. He's kind of a poor man's version of Matt Kuchar for us, where he needs to get his putter going around, but he's a great ball striker and great total driver. I do like him as a great salary relief option this week as well as he was last week i mean i don't think he should be under 8k this week but he is so we kind of got to take advantage of that this is a play where drac is kind of just forcing us to play it same as this next play as well so lucas glover i just feel like we're being forced in this play as well he's made four straight cuts at this course now yes they haven't been great finishes but this is the best golf that lucas glover has played in his career so i do think we can project Around a T30 finish or so for him this year, which would be his best finish here in the last four years. But let's look at his stats here. He is 17th in strokes gained to the green, uh, top 40 in greens regulation. He's also a good total putter, uh, ranking 22nd in that. He's both top 25 in ball striking and total driving. So we do like him as a really good option as well. You know, his current form has been only okay, making his last three starts. But when he does make the cut, it's going to be a good finish and it's going to pay off for us. At least that's what it has been this year. Now, maybe, you know, pivot option. Let's try to find one here. I think I'd just rather go down to someone like Keegan Bradley, who's a little bit lower. And I, I didn't pull him up on the video, but let's touch on Keegan for a second here. So, Keegan, T23 finish here in 2018, missed cut in 2017, and then two T8 finishes here in 2016 and 2015. So, he does have that good course history. Keegan is also a top 10 in ball striking and full driving. Uh, top 15 in strokes gained to the green and top 50 in greens of regulation. So I don't mind Keegan as a pivot option if we have to go with that as well. So that is all that I have for you guys for core plays. I do like uh, Kevin Streelman as well. He was a close option for me for the core section as well as Keegan Bradley. Those were kind of just plays that I didn't want to touch on, but that's all I got. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you did. And as always, let's keep cashing. This should be a better week, so let's look forward to that one. Thanks.